We built our whole homestead from scratch. That afforded us the foresight to build exactly how we want to live. And power was the number one priority. After water, of course. And because of our location and our hardy winters, we knew we might have problems. So for our tiny home, we built a multi-layered solution that would keep us warm and powered at all times. We have grid power, battery backup power, multiple generator power sources, and portable power. All of which keeps us safe, warm, and prepared. So today, I'm gonna share with you all of our backup power solutions, how they work, how we did it, and maybe this video will help you out. Many of you know we lived off grid for almost five years, powered completely by these juicy little batteries. And although it worked really great, that can be really limiting. So during the build of our tiny home, we decided to sacrifice our energy self-sufficiency for the ability to power anything we needed for 98% of the year by tying to the power grid. And although a 2% outage over the course of a full year sounds like nothing, it can mean frozen pipes, wasted food, or the potential loss of life. So we used our off-grid resourcefulness and came up with a layered solution that would keep our tiny home powered at all times. And the final layer of the solution is actually the most accessible and cost-friendly, and I think every home should have some form of this, so make sure you stick around for that. Just six months ago, we had a huge ice storm in spring. It knocked out the power to over a million homes here in Ontario. It knocked down the trees all over the property and blocked road access in both directions. We ended up being out of power for 14 days and everybody around us was running their generators to keep their fridge running, their sump pumps pumping, and that meant there was a huge demand on all the local gas stations, which were actually shut down due to running out of gas. That shows us the cons of our first layer of power, the grid. Although it's reliable, easy, and maintenance-free to homeowners, it's also vulnerable to outages, and outages can last a long time. But we were prepared with layer number two. And I know what you're thinking. Tiny home, that doesn't need much power. But remember, we have a full-size fridge, a dishwasher, and electric oven, but a gas top. I'll share why later. Lots of lighting, fans, television, a wife who loves to cook. <laughs> and of course, in the washroom, we have a washer dryer and all of our utilities like our well pump. So as you can see, even if a home is small, it does require power. So let's get to that second layer, which is up here. The second layer to our tiny home is a battery system. Some of you who have been here for a long time know that we keep it in the very top of our utility closet. I built it from scratch specifically for our tiny home. When the grid is down, we can resume like nothing happened at all. That's because these four Battleborn batteries can run all our major systems. Our well pump and hot water, fridge, exhaust fans, lights, outlets, Wi-Fi, and more. This setup can sustain all of those things for just under two weeks without any power coming in to recharge them. But we do have solar attached to the batteries, and most importantly, we can recharge them off the generator. Now, like anything, this system does have cons. It can be a limited amount of runtime based on how much battery you have. It can be incredibly expensive and it's also fairly technical. But I would say that the pros completely outweigh the cons. It's instant power, like you don't even notice. It's super quiet compared to other things. It's relatively no maintenance and you can recharge them very easily. Remember when I mentioned the van? We have almost the identical setup from the van in our tiny home, just a little bit more battery capacity in here. It worked great for five years in there. It's worked great for over a year in here. I'd say it's a win. The really cool thing about the backup batteries is we can use them at the same time as the grid power is on or the generator is on. That's because I installed two separate panels. This panel is the one that feeds those major systems that I mentioned. And this panel is all the other ones we can't run like the oven or the dryer or the in-floor heat. So if the batteries are powering our major systems, we can save some money by using the batteries on solar while the grid is on. And if the grid is out, we can be using the generator to supply to everything or some of the things. Having flexibility is really important. And if you wanna learn more about how we did our battery system, you can watch this video after. I'm curious what you do when the power goes out. Do you just wait it out? Do you have a plan in place? Make sure you comment below. But let's take a two second break to love on CDA. What a good girl. So remember when I said it was really important for us to have a propane stovetop? Well, that's because when the power goes out, we can continue to cook without any power whatsoever. 
because the gas is already forcing itself up the pipes, you can just light it with a lighter and you can continue to cook. That's a great little hack. I do need to upgrade the battery system though. That's in the form of solar. Right now we have a very limited amount of solar coming into the backup batteries, which is totally fine. They're there as a backup supply and not a main supply. I have a couple of the off-grid washroom solar panels temporarily tied in to the battery backups in the tiny home. But in the future, I'd love to have a large array. That way we can run all of those major systems and we can actually reduce our monthly utility cost. That'd be pretty cool. But enough talk about layer number two, let's move on to layer number three. And if you can like this video, it really helps me out and it means I can continue to bring you free content. So layer number three, or backup number two, hides in here. I bet many of you are very familiar with this, which is a generator. And it's probably the most useful thing that a household or a homestead could use. They're great for extended outages. They can power really large items and they can sit and wait for long periods of time before you need them. And for us, they extend the life of our batteries when the grid is down because we can just recharge the batteries really, really fast off of a generator. But there are cons. It can cost a lot in fuel if you run them for a long time. They're also super loud. Even though we have far neighbors, we can hear all the generators going for that long outage. And the other thing is they do require maintenance. Here's a couple tips for you. Get yourself a dual fuel generator. That means that you can run it on gas or propane. That really helped us out when all the gas stations were completely out of gas. A couple subscribers picked up one of these who are off grid and they said it's the biggest difference to their off grid homestead that they've had in years. Costco always has really great deals on generators. My favorite is Champion. And remember that rule that I preach all the time, two is one and one is none? Well, here in the messy shed, I keep a second generator because you never know if one's gonna break down. Try to find one cheap off marketplace or something like that. Plus, if you have a neighbor who's in need and a long outage, they can borrow it. And of course, keep extra fuel on hand. If you're worried about storage, like you're keeping it for up to six months or more, you can use a fuel stabilizer. I go through all my gas and diesel within three months or so, so I'm never worried about that. But I also keep lots of uh, propane on hand because we have many things that run propane as well. And feel free to drop any tips in the comments below because as Red Green would say, we're all in this together. Next up is layer number four, which is easily the most accessible layer. But I do wanna tell you that I have a free ebook, the emergency kit for power outages. It's got tons of great tips and tricks that you may not know. My favorite is number 10, the emergency binder. Every single household should have this thing. Make sure you check that out. It's a free ebook linked in the description below. I thought I would do layer number four up on our hillbilly deck. I just made these steps in my most recent video, the DIY sawmill. So make sure you check that one out after, but let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So layer number four for us is portable power. We've always had this before we even lived off grid or whatever. And I understand that all these layers can be quite expensive to the average homeowner, but this is the most accessible one that you can do. And the one you should have at a minimum that is some way to recharge your phone. You can use a large solar battery bank like this one. You can also use something like this really high powered flashlight has a way of outputting some juice and making sure that you can charge your phone. At a minimum, you should have some way of recharging your phone for communications. It's so important. And uh, I would recommend more than anything, I'm not sponsored at all, but I would recommend a Jackery. They are just, the most quality and can actually do the most for you. We always have this sitting around and we use it quite a bit, especially when we go camping or anything like that. Now you can't do too much with something like this. You could power a small power tool. You could maybe run your gas furnace for like five or six hours off something like this, but you're not gonna be able to power your home. And that's the cons of it. It really just can't power a home, but they're lightweight they're portable, they're actually really reliable, they are completely silent, and they require no maintenance. So here's my tips for backup power for you if you're starting from scratch. Start in layer four, get yourself a portable power bank, whether it's a small one or a larger one like the Jackery you saw, something that can recharge your phone and give you communications when the power is out for emergencies. Next, step up to a generator. Get yourself a generator that at a minimum can make sure you can cook, make sure you can heat, and make sure you can give yourself water. 
at a minimum, make sure you do that. But if you buy a larger capacity one, then it can do probably your whole home. Then after that, if you're like me, someone who likes getting your hands into things, figuring stuff out, learning new skills, build yourself a backup battery system. They can be expensive, but they are incredibly rewarding and pay themselves off. The one we have, we have used countless times in the past two years alone. It's already paid for itself easily. I do think that is the future of homes. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below if you think so too, but I think that most homes of the future are gonna have a grid power coming into them as well as their own standalone battery system, which is being supplemented by solar and other resources. That way, if the grid ever goes down, then you do have some power and continue with your daily life. If you hear Sadie barking in the background, I don't know if you can see her. She's barking at the generator I brought out. She has a really good nose. There's probably a mouse in it, which means I gotta go deal with that after. Here's some really critical takeaways from our experiences of not only being off grid, but also back on grid again here on our homestead for the past five years. The first is if you're ever doing a battery system on or off grid, Whatever you think your capacity is, add a little bit more. You can never go wrong with more battery capacity. It makes a huge difference. Second is there's a myth out there that if you're off grid, that generators mean you're not off grid. Don't listen to anybody like that because they've never been off grid. A generator is the most important tool that you can have besides your batteries. Here where we live, the climate we have in Ontario, we get such little light in the winter time. We get so much snow that is very difficult to recharge our batteries off of solar. That meant that when we lived off grid for five years, this was our best friend. Every two weeks we recharge everything for a very little amount of gas. It was absolutely fantastic. So get yourself a generator while you're on or off grid. It doesn't matter. They're really important. And third is fuel storage and planning. We learned that with the most recent ice storm where people were actually driving to town to fill up jerry cans and their trucks. They'd get to town, realize the gas stations were shut down, there's no gas, and they didn't have enough fuel to get home. They needed to rely on others. That was a big eye-opening experience for a lot of people. So it's very important that you have some sort of fuel backed up, whether it's for you or a neighbor, it's really important. Now, I know you guys have so many good tips, so I want you to comment below what your backup plans are, how you back up, are they similar to the stuff that we have? How do you keep your home running? Make sure you comment them in the comments below, because as I said, we're all in it together. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video, it helps me out so much. And also, hopefully I earned your subscription today. Until the next video, I'll see you then.